Central banks around the world are going broke. The honest ones are coming in for bailouts. The dishonest ones, like the Federal Reserve, are hiding the losses. A few days ago, the Financial Times reported that the Swedish Central Bank, the world's oldest, lost 80 billion Swedish krona last year, which is about 7.2 billion US dollars. That is a lot considering that Sweden is smaller than Ohio. So it would be about 260 billion in US terms. That's the central bank losing that in one year. And note that is on top of Sweden's government budget deficit. This is just the central bank. As a result of the loss, Sweden's central bank went into negative equity. So they are bankrupt. They had to come to parliament to ask for more money, joining the Bank of England in the bailout walk of shame. As my colleague EJ Antoni has observed, it is pretty amazing that central banks are going bankrupt considering they literally have a money printer. So why are central banks going bust? And the reason is they printed ridiculous amounts of money to finance COVID lockdowns, over $10 trillion worldwide, and then they use that money to buy bonds, primarily government bonds. The problem is bonds go down when interest rates go up. So now, after the most savage round of worldwide rate hikes in 50 years, they are losing money hand over fist on their mountain of bonds. Here in America, it's the same story with much bigger numbers. At the moment, the Fed is in fact bankrupt by a full trillion dollars and rising every month. Interestingly, the Fed will not have to do the walk of shame because of a very cute accounting gimmick where the Fed gets to redefine losses as, wait for it, deferred assets. They can do this because they make up their own accounting rules. And if you're curious what logic lies beneath, normally the Fed pays most of its profits to Congress, effectively commissions paid to Congress for the right to print money. So think of them as licensing fees for a licensed counterfeiter over at the Fed. Pre-COVID, those remittances were about $80 billion a year paid to the Treasury, meaning the real budget deficit was actually bigger. It was being offset by the counterfeiting fees. So now that the Fed has gone and lost a ton of money, it simply books the loss as a trillion. It doesn't have to pay Congress. Presto, a trillion of debt becomes a deferred asset. Don't try that with your bank. For a comparison, Silicon Valley Bank went under with perhaps $20 billion in net debt, nowhere near a trillion. And that's because regular banks don't get to rewrite accounting rules. They have to use the old-fashioned way of bribing Congress, and apparently Silicon Valley did not bribe enough. So what is next? Brought to you by Unchained. I mentioned in recent videos how inflation is rising again, so rates will stay up, meaning the central bank holes will get bigger and bigger. That is going to lead to more central bank bailouts and blowing out government deficits from Europe to Japan to yet more irresponsible poor countries. As for the US, the Fed will be docking those annual remittances for decades to come, actually for the rest of our lives at the pace they're currently going, meaning yet more trillions in deficit on top of a national debt that is looking more comical by the day. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.